When I was young, the waters sang of being here before I am, of falling sweet and soft and slow to berry bog and high meadow, and held me in her lap and cooed the willow roots, the gaining pools, and called me through bright dappled grass, and called me, oh, my shining one, and shaped a bed to lay me on and played the flute so high and clear and shape the stones to carry me when I am young and full of fight for roaring here and roaring there for pouring torrents in the air when I am young as mountain snow in crag and cleft and cracked window I call the greenback cutthroat trout I call the nymph and helgramite I call the hatch to catch a wind I call upon the mountain track I call the scarlet to the jaw as morning calls her own hatchlings. Call Yampa, White, the Rio Grande, San Juan, the Platte, the Arkansas. Water law is one of the most complex and specific subsets of law known to lawyers. It is also a section of law expected to receive more attention and undergo many changes because of the effect climate change is having on water in Colorado Water law also happens to be particularly complex if you live in the state of Colorado. Over 80% of the state's water comes from the western side of the Continental Divide, while over 80% of the state's population lives on the eastern side of the Continental Divide. This created the need for an irrigation and di diversion systems to get potable water to the majority of the state's citizens, as well as 18 other states and part of Mexico. This is all due to a phenomenon known as the rain shadow. A rain shadow occurs where an obstacle, such as a mountain range, forces clouds to rise. This drains the cloud of moisture, and by the time the cloud surmounts the mountain range, it largely no longer holds precipitation. This causes the first side of the mountain to be flush with precipitation, and large swaths of land on the opposite side of the mountains to be in a semi-desert state. To quote A Citizen's Guide to Colorado's Environmental Era, Four major arteries of the American West begin on Colorado's Continental Divide, where rivulets only inches apart lead to the world's two greatest oceans, the Atlantic and the Pacific. The Platte, Arkansas, and Rio Grande flow through eastern Colorado into the Gulf of Mexico, thus the Atlantic. The Colorado River drains the western half of the state on its way to the Sea of Cortez and the Pacific Ocean. Meager as they may have appeared to Mark Twain, Colorado's rivers were, and still are, destined for greatness. To learn more about water law and how it affects the state, we met with former Colorado Supreme Court Justice and unparalleled poet, Justice Gregory Hobbs. Well, Greg Hobbs, I just uh, have retired after 19 and a quarter years on the Colorado Supreme Court as a justice, and of course we do everything that Colorado persons and businesses can get themselves into, you know, criminal law, civil law, uh, family law. Uh, before that, I was 17 years as counsel to the Northern Colorado Water Conservancy District, which is the largest conservancy district in the state. All the western states uh, face this problem. Uh, west of the Mississippi River, this great public domain that was brought into the United States by the 1803 Louisiana Purchase, uh, the 1846 Oregon Treaty, the 1848 Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, in other words, the entire West. When you get beyond the 100th meridian, which is this line uh, of precipitation, where it's wet to the east more than 20 inches a year and dry to the west, less than 20 inches requiring irrigation. That runs through Nebraska and Kansas, okay? That, that's the 100th meridian that uh, John Wesley Powell was very concerned about that Wallace Stegner in the great biography of Powell wrote about. So when the dry lands, all the territories and states uh, had to come up with some way to cope with water scarcity, drought, uh, the idea that the common law of England and the eastern United States, the riparian law, only allowed people owning land along the banks of the stream to divert any water, right? Couldn't work out here because you had to take the water out of the streams to wherever you could grow crops. That was the first and highest use and domestic drinking water. So none of this land could have been settled away from the stream banks itself anywhere in the West uh, if riparian water law applied. 
which it doesn't. So that's how prior appropriation law came to be. So we are the mother of rivers. 18 downstream states depend on our water. 18 downstream states and the Republic of Mexico at the Rio Grande and the Colorado River. 18 plus the Republic of Mexico. So Colorado water off the divide goes all the way to the Mississippi River, the Gulf of Mexico, the Sea of Cortez. Wow. And we can only consume one third of it. Two thirds of it we have to deliver out of state because we have nine interstate compacts and two cases of the U.S. Supreme Court that divide the waters. That's the law of the United States. The Colorado Supreme Court has always had this jurisdiction over water cases because that's how important the legislature has viewed water rights. State judges have jurisdiction over federal issues that arise in their cases. The federal agencies and the Indian tribes are also subject to the jurisdiction of the Colorado Supreme Court because of a special law of the United States, the McCarran Amendment, that waives sovereign immunity. So judges have the jurisdiction over tribal water rights, Federal Reserve water rights, as well as all state water rights. So all water rights can be heard in the seven Colorado water courts with an appeal to the Colorado Supreme Court. And from there, the appeal on the federal issues is to the U.S. Supreme Court. The judiciary, however, does not hold total control, leaving much of the water and other environmental matters to the legislature. This can be tricky and often produces seemingly contradictory results for environmental progression. In 1992, waterway restoration projects took off when voters created the Great Outdoors Colorado, also known as the GOCO Trust Fund. This amendment to the state constitution grants a state lottery and directs that it proceeds go to the Parks and Recreation Department, where it helps preserve and enhance parks, rivers, trails, and open spaces. This amendment has dedicated almost $500 million for more than 2,100 environmental projects, including many waterway improvements. However, recently voters in eight different Colorado counties approved a tax increase to finance $4.7 billion worth of expansion of the light rail system. However, on the same day, despite severe drought, each of the eight counties also voted down referendum A, which would have provided $2 billion for water projects and research. Public water is available in Colorado only for beneficial use. What does that mean? Again, we asked Justice Hobbs. Now today, beneficial uses include agricultural, municipal, uh, commercial, industrial, hydropower, and in-stream flow water rights for the Water Conservation Board's in-stream flow program, and kayak course rights to keep water in the streams at particular points to float kayaks uh, in, in, in these courses that various local governments set up along the streams on the east and west slope. With such emphasis placed on water, it's no surprise that Colorado water law is one of the most specific subsets in the legal system and requires eloquent experts such as Gregory Hobbs to educate the public on the importance of water rights in Colorado. When I was young, the water sang of being here before I am of falling sweet and soft and slow to berry bog and high meadow and held me in her lap and cooed the willow roots the gaining pools and called me through bright dappled grass and called me oh my shining one and shaped a bed to lay me on and played the flute so high and clear and shaped the stones to carry me when i am young and full of fight for roaring here and roaring there, for pouring torrents in the air. When I am young as mountain snow, in crag and cleft, in crack window, I call the greenback cutthroat trout. I call an infant helgramite. I call the hatch to catch a wind. I call upon the mountain track. I call the scarlet to the jaw, as morning calls her own hatchlings. Call Yampa, White, the Rio Grande, San Juan, the Platte, the Arkansas.